Oh, praise to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called an adulterous woman. An adulterous woman. This definitely, this class was was inspired by the things I was seeing this day. Okay. Um, let's open up. The we're gonna be dealing with um, a couple of characteristics of an adulterous woman. All right. Um, the adulterous woman has no shame. That's the first characteristic. She has no shame whatsoever. That's the first characteristics of an adulterous woman. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 6, verse 23. Let's start there. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Go ahead. For the commandment is a lamp, mm -hmm. and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So the way of life is the instruction that comes from the commandments of the Most High. Next verse. Come on. Watch this. To keep thee from the evil woman, mm -hmm. from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. That's the reason why it says what and reproofs of instructions are the way of life. Because the commandment, which is a lamp, and the law that is the light, is going to keep you from an evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Because an evil woman and a strange woman, they got gain. Understand that? Because a lot of the times you see brothers, just they think they've got gain. They can sleep with as many women as they can, they can, they can find. Guess what? These women, they've mastered the game as well. These women also, they know how to hunt for men. So the brother would be thinking, no, I'm going there to be, I'm going to be picking up chicks. Listen, these sisters, they've mastered the game. They, they have game also. And they always catch the simp all the time. Read that again. Verse 24, come on. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. Go ahead. To keep thee from the evil woman, mm -hmm. from the flattery, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. So this evil woman, the laws of God are going to keep you away from the evil woman. And the laws of God are going to give you the characteristics of an evil woman, you understand, and of a strange woman. Because the Lord says, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Meaning what? She's got gain. Give me Proverbs 7, 21. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 21. Come on. Proverbs chapter you know 7, what? verse 21. Before you get verse 21, read verse 5. Then we're going to jump down to verse, five, verse 21. Come on. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 5. Go ahead. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, mm -hmm. from the stranger which flattereth with her words. You see that thing? From the stranger which flattereth with her words. Because a woman be saying sweet nothings to you. You think you must be thinking you are the best thing that has ever happened since sliced bread. <clears throat> She does that with all the men she meets because she's also hunting for simps. You understand? She's hunting for those men. Those brothers think that they got game. She's like, no, I got a I got better game than you. And I'm going to catch you. I want to destroy you. And I'm going to move on to the next simple Negro that I'm going to destroy as well. Read that again. Verse 5. Proverbs 7 verse 5. Read. That they may keep thee from the strange women. Mm -hmm. From the stranger which flattered with her with her words. From the stranger which flattered with her words. And guess what? She knows which, which sim brother I'm going to approach and the things I'm going to say and how he's going to react. Watch this. Read verse 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And beheld among the simple ones. And I discerned among the youths. A young man void of understanding. A young man void of understanding. You see what she's saying? It says, and beheld among the simple ones, meaning the dumb ones, the simps. The simple one means a simp brother. This woman, she knows she's got gay. You understand? And says, and beheld among the simple ones, meaning those brothers think they got game. She's like, I got a better game than you. Remember, women are outnumber the men in number. You understand? Even in weight. Now, some women, they weigh more than men. The 60, 40 to 60% of the women today, I'm just talking about in the black community, the Israelite community, the women, they, more, they weigh more than their men. They are overweight. So guess what? It says, and beheld among the simple ones, meaning dumb Negroes, I, I descend among the youths, 
because youth have no understanding. You know, young men, they are filled with youthful lusts. They are horny. The only, all they want is to have sex. She said, I want that. That's, that. These are the ones I want right there. You understand? But I give my Ben 10. You understand? She knows how to sit them out. You understand? A young man void of understanding. You don't understand how women do things. You don't understand women. So that's why it says a young man void of understanding. Meaning you don't understand women. They've got game and they will destroy your life if you don't deal with this book. Watch this. Verse 21. Come on. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 21. Mm -hmm. With her much fair speech, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. She caused him to what? She caused him to yield. Meaning she catches you. She will cause you see, with much, with her much fair, fair speech, she caused him to yield. Meaning what? She will flatter you. She will flatter you. And guess what? If you don't, you know, you're not used to getting attention from women. Guess what? When she smiles at you, she flatters you. She knows that you, you, you be longing for the attention. Now she got you. Keep going. Read. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. Mm -hmm. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Did she really force him? No, she, she didn't. She didn't have to force him. But what she's letting, what, what, what King Solomon is teaching us here in the spirit of the Lord is that, guess what? It will be as if she forced you to do it, but she did not. Because what? She, she battered you. She will batter you with her words. And now she what? Now she got, she got you. Now, what? you know what? She's got one on you. Now you're in the bag. Now she body bags you. She flatters you with her words. After that, she body bags you. Now she's yours. She got you. You understand? Watch this. Go back. Proverbs 6, verse 24. Proverbs 6, verse 24. Mm -hmm. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. From the flattery of the tongue of the strange woman. Because guess what? Women know women. They know, women know that women are wicked as hell. Men know men. That's why women cannot, what? Women don't know how to pick men. Because these women of today, they say, I'm independent. I don't need no man. Listen, you need a man in your life. I'm not talking about a boyfriend because that's against the law. Your father is a man. Your uncle is a man. Your brother is a man. You understand? Your cousin, man, is a man. He'll be able to tell, listen, I know men. Men are full of BS. They will play you. They will give you, they will sex you. And they will drop you like a hot potato and move on to the next sister to sex up. You understand? That's why today you see, now, mm, let me not jump ahead. Let me not jump ahead. Let me calm down. Read that again. Proverbs 6 verse 24 again. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 24. Go ahead. To keep thee from the evil woman. Mm -hmm. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. From the flattery of the tongue of from a strange woman. And guess what? Give me Proverbs 31. You see, King Solomon's mother, this is what uh, she taught his son, her son. Watch this. Proverbs 31 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 1. The, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy of his mother taught him. No, the prophecy that his mother taught him. I need you to put some energy in your reading. Come on. Verse 1 again. Proverbs 31 verse 1. The words of King Lemuel. Mm -hmm. The prophecy that his mother taught him. The prophecy that his mother, his mother taught him. Meaning what? Women, they know women. So guess what? This woman, she taught her son. Listen, I know women. Let me tell you something about women. And this is what you must not do when it comes to women. Read verse 3. Come on. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Give not thy strength unto women. Mm -hmm. Nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. You see what he's saying? He says, don't give your strength unto women. Meaning what? Don't give your whole life to a woman. Because guess what? You are not necessarily giving your whole life to this woman. You are giving your whole life to get access to the box. You give your whole life to this woman to get access to the coochie. <coughs> That's the only reason why you do it. That's why you see some men, the, what they will do, they will travel for hours. They will travel for miles just so they can get with that woman. 
You understand? It doesn't matter whether they have to borrow money, they have to do such and such, let who they have to defraud just to get to that woman. What do they want from that woman? What's between her legs? Their, their mind is buried in that thing. You can't tell them nothing. You understand? You can't give them advice. You cannot counsel them. No. Okay. Read that thing again. Verse 3. Proverbs 31 verse 3. Go ahead. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Because you see what he says, nor thy ways. Don't give, don't give your strength to a woman, nor your ways that which destroyeth kings. Because women, many have fallen because of women. They've destroyed kings. You read the history? I mean, look at King Solomon. The wisest man on earth, he had a dumb spirit on him. What was his dumb spirit? Women. Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 44. Let's prove that thing. Okay. Don't give your strength to women. Watch this. That's why you, you hear brothers in the world, they be saying, they say that um, a woman before you deal with her, meaning you lay with a woman, she will respect you and all of that. You understand? Because she don't know you know you. The minute you have sex with that sister, guess what? Now, her true colors also comes out. Now she starts to disrespect you because she knows you knows you. You see that thing? But in this truth, mm -mm, that will not be allowed. You, that, that man is your Lord. You must treat him as such. That said the Lord. First Peter 3 and 6. That's what it says. Watch this. Sirach 40, mm, yes, Sirach, no, not Sirach 44, Sirach 47, verse 19. Ecclesiastes no, yeah. 40. Uh -huh. That's the one. Sirach 47 verse 19. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 47 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Thou didst bow thy loins unto women. What did he do? And Thou didst bow thy loins unto women. He bowed, he bowed his loins to women. Meaning what? He, 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 that was his weakness. His loins. When it comes to women, he was not thinking with the men upstairs. He was thinking with the little. He was thinking with the little men downstairs. That's why it says, "Thou did bow." He says, "Thou didst bow thy loins unto women, plural, multiple women." You understand? So he was thinking with his rod. He wasn't thinking with his mind, where wisdom is. No, he was thinking with his penis. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? Such as some of you men. Read that again. Verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 47, verse 19. Go ahead. Thou didst bow thy loins unto women, mm -hmm. and by thy body thou wast brought into subjection. And by your body, because by your lust, you were brought into subjection, meaning what? You subjected yourself to these women because of what? The coochie. The coochie. You understand? Men will go out to war and destroy other nations, conquer and all of that, just to bring all the spoils to a woman. And once they bring the spoils to a woman and the woman drops her head, she drops her dresses, she drops her dress, she drops her underwear, guess what? That's all you did, all of that just to get to them. Think about that thing. Think about that thing. Watch this. Go back to Proverbs 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24 again. That's why today you see all these um, so-called rich. I'm talking about our people now. You look at our people that are so-called rich. When you look at their lives, right, there's, only, there's always one common error in their life, the woman. Because guess what? They, they, they think that money will bring this woman into subjection. No, no. Mm -mm. She's there. She's going to play her role just so she can get access to the money. But guess what? She don't respect you. She will not submit herself to you, even with all the money you have in the world. You understand? That's why a lot of these rich men, wealthy men, they don't have control over their women. We, with all the money they got, they don't have, the woman is always running them. The woman, with all the hard work they put in, with all the wealth they've got, the woman is always in charge all the time. Why? Because, because this woman, she's headstrong. He is a simp. You understand? She got his balls in her purse. Guess what? He can't say nothing because guess what? What's controlling him is what? This sister, she knows how to make it clap. That's all she knows. 
She knows how to ride him. She knows how to deal with him in the bedroom. When he thinks about that, he just forgets all the red flags, the flaws, all the evils that she's doing, you know. He forgets all of that. This is a common thing on men today because what? They're not using this Bible to see what type of sister they must deal with. You see what I'm saying? Read that again. Proverbs 6, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. Go ahead. To keep thee from the evil woman, mm -hmm. from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Read. Lust not after her, lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Mm -hmm. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. He says, don't lust after a beauty in thine heart. You see, the key word is lust. Give me that in First John 2, 16. It says what? Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Meaning what? Don't let her beauty hold you prisoner. Where is that? Hold that. Before we get that, give me that in Judith. Okay. The book of Judith, chapter 16, verse 9. Go ahead. Her sandals ravished his, eye, his eyes. He says her sandals. Now, this man, just looking at our sister, our foremother, Judith, has sandals, meaning what? I get it when she's wearing sandals, you can see her toes, you can see her feet, right? Because some men have a foot fetish. You understand? They be sucking on women's uh, uh, toes and all of that. Mm -hmm. So he had a foot fetish, not her sandals, because who can be, who can, who can be ravished by somebody's sandals? He's not talking about her sandals, because when you are wearing sandals, somebody's feet are shown. You can see their feet. You can see their toes. You understand? Mm -hmm. Read that again. Judith chapter 16, verse 9. Go ahead. Her sandals ravished his eyes. Mm -hmm. Her beauty took his mind prisoner. You see that thing? Her beauty took his mind prisoner. He was imprisoned by this woman's beauty. So much so he couldn't think straight. You understand? Now, because she, she has you on lock, guess what happens next? Now, when you, if she gives you the coochie, now you are buried in that thing. Now she's holding you prisoner twice now. You see that thing? You're going to be doing some strange things. Read verse 9 again. Judith chapter 16, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Her sandals ravished his eyes. Read. Her beauty took his mind prisoner. Come on. And the fortune passed through his neck. The fortune that's a blade. Okay, but what I want to get to, he says, he says, her beauty took his mind prisoner. Her beauty took his mind prisoner. Go back to Proverbs. Okay, Proverbs 6, verse 25 again. Proverbs 6, verse 25. Go ahead. Lust not after her. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. So now I'm going to get to that eyelid part. It says, last not after her beauty in thine heart. Because if you are lasting, that means her beauty is holding you prisoner. Because you are lasting. It's not love, it's lust. Because you are lasting, that means, guess what? Her beauty is holding you prisoner. Watch this. Now, give me that in First John chapter 2, verse 16 now. Give me that thing. First John 2. First John chapter 2, verse 16. Go ahead. For all that is in the world, mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh. The what? And the, the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh, because your flesh is lusting after things. Your flesh is always lusting for things. That's why the Bible is there to do what? To give us the spirit of discipline. So we discipline our flesh, not to give them one, not, not to give in to the lusts of our flesh. You understand? Read that again. First John chapter 2, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For all that is in the world, mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh Read. and the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. Because your eyes are seeing this, be this beautiful woman. Okay? Because you are seeing this beautiful woman, you are lusting after her beauty. Her beauty has, hold, has you held prisoner. You understand? The, that's what the Lord is saying. What? The lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. Hold this. Watch this. You know what? Keep going. There's somewhere I want to go. Keep going. And the lust of the eyes and mm -hmm. the pride of life. The what? And the pride of life. The pride of life goes into 
I, that beautiful woman that everybody wanted to get to, now the pride of life is that now, now she's yours now. You understand? You're walking around her, you're walking around with her in your arms and all that, but she caught you. Her beauty is holding you prisoner. She, she's going to run you. She's going to run you. Whatever decision you make is because she's the one that is influencing every decision that you make. So are you the head of the house? No, she's the head, but she's ruling the house through you. And you think you are running things, can, mm -mm, you are not running nothing. She's running everything. That's the black man today who's without this Bible. As long as you are not in this book, that woman, she is running you and you are a simp. The Lord can use you. You understand? Your house is not in order. It's out of order. Watch this. Job 31 verse 1. Come on. Job chapter 31 verse 1. Read. I made a covenant with mine eyes. What did he say? I made a covenant with mine eyes. He says, I made a covenant with mine eyes. I made an agreement with my lustful eyes. Because in 1 John, it says the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. So the Lord is saying, you must make a covenant with your eyes. So you don't lust. You understand? Because once you look and you lust after that, you're already having sex with that woman before you even physically do it. But spiritually, you are doing it. Go ahead. Same goes with the sisters too. You look at a man, you're lusting after him. You're already having sex with him spiritually. That's why today... In the black community, right? In our community, yes, the sisters that are not, they don't know they're Israel, but they're in the Christian church. They go to church every Sunday, right? When they get there, the Bible teaches us Christ is a black man, okay? So, but guess what? She's married to a black man, this woman. Whenever she's dealing with her husband sexually, guess who she's seeing in her mind? Why Jesus? Why Jesus is in her mind? Whenever she prays, white Jesus is in her mind. So who's really her husband? Why the white man is her husband. Although she's married to a black man, but she's married to the white man, her real husband. Because everything she does is based on everything she was taught by this white man. How she dresses, she put on pants, you understand? She put on, she put on weaves, she bleaches her skin, you understand? She dresses like a man. When we're having an argument, she even comes at you like a man will come at you. You see that thing? Because she's married to her husband, the white man. Because the white man, everything he teaches is going 100% against this Bible. That's the point. Read verse 1 again. Job chapter 31 verse 1. Go ahead. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Mm -hmm. Why then should I think upon a maid? Why then should I think upon a young woman? Why then should I think upon a sister? Why should I think upon, upon her? Because if you are thinking about her, what are you thinking about her? You are thinking sexually about that woman. That's the point. Okay, let's go back. First John 2, verse 16 again. First John chapter 2, verse 16. Go ahead. For all that is in the world, Mm -hmm. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. You see what he's saying? The, and the pride of life that I got that woman. Guess what? In her mind, she's, I caught the simp now. And the adulterers will hunt for the precious life. All the stuff that you got going for yourself, you start, you're, you're running businesses or you want to go into a business. She will disrupt all of that. You understand? All the money you have been saving for all these years, so you can be able to start a business or whatever. Guess what? She will suck everything you got. Why? Because that's all she's looking for. And she'll give you access to the box. She, 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 doesn't, she doesn't value the box. She will give you access to the booty. And then once she's done with you, she move on to the next victim. That's what's going on today on a day-to-day -day basis. Because the number of women, they outnumber the men. They outnumber us. You understand? The scale, I think, now is like, what, eight to one? Eight women to every one man. Think about that. You understand? And we as a nation, the nation of Israel, we don't die. We multiply. Look how many we are. You understand? Now, go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 6, verse 25 again.
Proverbs chapter 6, verse 25. Go on. Last not after her beauty in thine heart. Down, down is the, the Bible, this is the commandment, it says, last not after a beauty in thine heart. Why? Because you've made a covenant with your eyes. So you must not be thinking about any maid that is not your wife. If you're not married, your mind's supposed to be on the ordinances of the Most High God. Not after some sister. Not after some coochie. Mm -mm. Your mind's supposed to be on this. Until the Lord, will, until you prove a sister, and then you get married to the sister, then when you thinking about those thoughts, your wife's supposed to be the one that you're thinking about. You understand? So now it says, last not after a beauty in thine heart. I still want to deal with that. Watch this. Give me Sirach 9, verse 5. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Chapter 9, verse 5. Let's get that. Sirach 9, verse 5. Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 5. Go ahead. Gaze not on a maid, mm -hmm. that, that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. You see what it says, gaze. To gaze means to stare. To stare persistently. You understand? You are staring. You are not just looking, no, you are staring. That's what it means to gaze. It says, gaze not on a maid, on a, on, a, on a woman, that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. Because if you are staring, that means you are lasting. Don't last on, on, a, on a woman, because you are going to fall by those things that are precious in her. What is that? Her booty. Her face. You understand? If you are into that, you are into big booty, big breasts, you are on a pretty face and all of that, guess what? Though you are going to fall by those things that are precious in here. Now she got you. You understand? Now you are suffering from... What did, what, 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 what did um, uh, the boondogs, you understand? A pimp named Flipback. It says, Tom, you are suffering from bitch dependency syndrome. That's a simp, okay? Excuse my French, but that's what he says. He says you are suffering from B dependency syndrome. Because once you fall by those things that are precious in here, guess what? Now you'll be suffering from B dependency syndrome. Okay, jump down to verse eight. Watch this. Verse eight. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman. That's another commandment. It says, turn away your eye from a beautiful woman. Because guess what? You are looking and you are lasting after her. And her beauty is going to hold you prisoner. And guess what? You want to commit sin because of that. Read. And look not upon another's, upon another's beauty. Don't look upon another man's beautiful woman. Don't lust. Don't covet after your neighbor's wife. Go ahead. For many have been deceived. By the beauty of a woman. That's the key right there. Because many, the reason why he's telling you, he says, don't, don't turn away thy eye from a beautiful woman and look not upon another's beauty, says, because many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. You just look at a pretty face. You don't know what type of woman she is. You don't know if she is a killer. You don't know if she will beat you up when you are fighting. You don't know if she will stab you. You don't know how she is when she's upset when she's angry, when she doesn't get what she wants, when she does not have things working, working her way, when she cannot get you, she cannot control you. You don't know how she will behave. That's why it says, for many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Go ahead. For herewith love is kindled as a fire. For herewith love is kindled as a fire. Now you have fallen for that sister. And she's only there to clean you out. Once she's done, she's moving, to, she's moving on to the next brother. You know, she has no shame in her, in her, in her, in, because that's a business. She's running a business. That's a business. You understand? That's the business. You are just a biz, you are just a business deal. That's all you are. And but you, because you are a simp, you just because you are longing for that attention of a woman, you listen, you go all out. Mm -mm. No, no, no. You need the Bible so that you can know how to prove this woman. You understand? Ask important questions to see what type of spirit you're dealing with. Okay, watch this. Um, let's go back. Sarak, I'm in Proverbs 6, verse 25 again. Come on. 
Come on. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 25. Go ahead. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Mm-hmm. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. He says, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. We dealt with that. He says, don't lust after her beauty in your heart, meaning in your mind. Your mind's supposed to be saving the Lord with that mind. Keeping God's commandments, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not commit adultery. Do not give your body as an instrument of fornication. Don't be doing that. He says, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. I want to deal with it. Give me Sarah 26, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 9. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 9. Go ahead. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks. Haughty means proud. A proud look. What is a proud look? We need to understand what it means to be proud. Watch this. Give me Sarah 10. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 12. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 12. Come on. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God. Mm -hmm. And his heart is turned away from his maker. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God. Because when you depart from God, you are departing from his commandments. You are no longer keeping what is written. You are no longer applying what is written. So you are proud because why? You think your way is better than the way of the Lord as it is written. You're going to come up with your own thought process on what this, the Bible is saying. No, the Bible is plain and straightforward. You understand? It says the beginning of pride is when one departed from God and his heart is turned away from his maker. Your mind is turned away from what? Your maker. Your maker tells you how you must live. He tells you how you must eat, what you, how you must dress, how you, how you deal with your neighbor and so forth. You understand? When you depart from the laws that he's given you, you are proud. Okay, go back. Sarah 26 verse 9 again. Ecclesiastes 26 verse 9. Come on. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. Haughty looks meaning a proud look. A look that was not given by the Most High God for her to look like that. That's why today our sisters, they be wearing pants, they be wearing leggings, they be wearing short mini skirts, hot pants, stomachs out, boobs showing, cleavage showing, you know, that's a proud look. That's not a righteous look that a woman of Israel must look like. A woman of Israel must wear long flowy dresses where we don't see her legs, none of that. Why? Because that's for her husband. You understand? So now it says what? And haughty looks and eyelids. Let's deal with that, okay? Let me share my screen real quick so we can see what that means when it says an eyelid. Hmm. Let's see. Could you read that for me? Read that. Did, Did you know, you know? Uh-huh. that in 1882, London, prostitute Gerda Pudo. No, 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 no. You're not reading properly. I don't know what's going on with you. Did you know that in 1882, London prostitute Gera Puridal invented elongated eyelashes? Read that again from the top. Did you know that in 1882, London prostitute Gerda Puridal invented elongated eyelashes or cumbrellas? Or oh, what? So, or cumbrellas. Or oh, cumbrellas. So you see these sisters with long eyelashes? That's what those things are called. Cambrellas. Keep going. Read. To block semen from getting in working with girls' eyes that no, are worn no, today. No, 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 no. Did you know that in 1882, London prostitute Gera Puridal invented elongated eyelashes or cambrellas to block semen from getting in working girls' Eye, eyes that are worn today as common fashion. So the sisters that be wearing long eyelashes, those are cambrellas. Because guess what? Well, some say this is true. Some say that nah, I don't give a damn. This is, this is just, listen, it's true. I believe this thing. It says they, wearing these, they wear these eye long. She invented these long eyelashes because the working girls, meaning prostitutes, when they were dealing with men, when the men would, would uh, release their semen, they would be releasing their semen all over and all of that. You understand? 
So when they were releasing their semen on their faces, guess what? The umbrellas would block the semen from entering into their eyes. Today is fashion. Umbrellas. You see, sisters don't know what this is. They'll be wearing these long eyelashes like a peacock. Those are umbrellas, yeah. Mm, fashion, right? Okay. <laughs> Watch this. Here's another one. Uh, this was sent by Brother Atlanta, I think. Let me share my screen real quick. Here's another sister with umbrellas. Here we go. <laughs> oh, boy. This is today's Makoti. This is Makoti. This, hold on, this is, this is today's Makoti. Watch this. Look at the umbrellas. You see the umbrellas? Those are umbrellas right there. Listen to what she's saying. So for those who don't understand what she's saying, she, they are saying, listen, the dishes must not sleep in the dishes, must not be sleeping in the sink. She's saying, no, no, I'll put them on the floor. That's what she's saying. Mm -hmm. It's not entering into the mind or you must wash them. So she's acting out what today's Makotis do. That's what they do. Okay. Okay, here's another one. I mean, she's got eyebrows, right? Why is she drawing new ones? You see, like, these sisters, they don't, they are not satisfied by nothing. The Lord gave them eyelashes. They said, no, mm -mm. I'm going to shave them off and I'm going to draw my new ones with pencil. I'm going to give you eyebrows. They say, mm -mm. no, no, eyebrows, yes, eyebrows. The eyebrows is the one they shave off and then they draw new ones. The eyelashes, they say, no, we're going to get fake ones, umbrellas. Okay, so you mean you mean to tell me you can satisfy you can satisfy these black women who they are not satisfied with the Lord what the Lord gave them the Lord gave them natural hair they said no I don't want that I want a weave and I want it blonde some now they have pink hair some have green hair that's what blue hair is a trend now okay. There we go. You see that thing right there? Now you can't even recognize it. She's got long umbrellas, new eyelashes and new eyebrows and a blonde weave. Mm. Oh, she's right, all right? She is correct in what she's saying. The sister is saying, when she arrives like that, guess what? They will fall for her. That's what she's saying. And that's exactly what happens this day. You understand? Okay. Um, read Surah 26 verse 9 again. That's the eyelids. I just wanted to keep that. In. I just wanted to explain this. You can see the context of what it means when it says an eyelids. Read that. Surah 26 verse 9. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 9. Go ahead. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to Proverbs 6, verse 25 again. Proverbs 6, verse 25. Go ahead. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Mm -hmm. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Don't let this woman take, take you by her eyelids. You understand? The way she acts. The way she makes herself, she make up, she put on makeup. When she puts on makeup, she's a completely different person. And then when she removes the, the makeup, she be looking like um, Samuel L. Jackson. She be looking like Mr. T. But, be, but after she puts on makeup, she, she looks like Beyonce. There was a man, I think it was in Saudi Arabia. He sued his wife. He said, listen, when I married you, when I met you, you were not like this because now they are married because she's always on makeup. Now on the day, in Saudi Arabia, they do arranged marriages, right? So you go and see the woman. She's all makeup and all of that because that's the new women of Saudi now today. 
Now, after they sleep with one another, consummating the marriage on the marriage feast, on the marriage night, now the makeup is gone. He's like, who are you? I don't know you. Who are you? And <laughs> I think it was a newspaper. He's like, who are you? Well, I'm your wife. Mm -mm. And he sued the family for that thing. <laughs> he sued the family. Okay? You can make this stuff up. Read on. Come on, verse 26. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. For by means of a horsewoman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Bread. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Now, that's it right there. You see, this type of women, they have no shame. You see, everything that we just read, they will flatter you with their, with their tongue. And guess what? It says, last, last not after her beauty. That means what does she do? She puts on makeup, so much makeup that you can't even tell. Uh, you cannot tell. You, you don't even know the real hair. You don't know what the real hair looks like. You understand? That's why it says, don't last after her beauty. She puts on so much makeup. It's like somebody just threw peanut butter on her face. You understand? So that's why it says, by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. I mean, think about it. Many men have, de have been destroyed. The wealthy men, I mean, I'll give an example. Look at Kanyimbau and what's that guy's name? Kenny something, right? What's his name? Manja. Manja something. Manja, what is his name? Manja who? I forgot his name. Okay, Manja. Look at Kanyimba, look at Manja, right? The millions, all the hundreds of millions that that brother had, does he, does he have them today? No. Where's the adult, where's that whorish woman? She's gone now. On to the next Negro. Now he's been brought to a piece of bread. Classic example. You understand? Read that again. Verse 26. Proverbs 6, verse 26. Go ahead. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. A man is and brought to a piece of bread. Because of this whorish, adulterous woman, because she's only there for what you've got. Once he's gone, she's also going to disappear as well. Read. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. The adulterous woman, she will hunt for the precious life. That's all she cares about. You understand? Watch this. Give me Sarah 6 verse 9. No, it's like 6 verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 8. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 8. Read. For some man is a friend for his own occasion mm -hmm. and will not abide in the day of trouble. In the you day of said? thy trouble. So for some men, meaning also because the Bible is written in a masculine form, some man or woman is a friend for his own occasion. Meaning they are only there because of the assets that you've got, the riches you've got. Once the riches are done, they're also going to disappear and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. When the riches run out, she'll also run out. And that's exactly what happened to that brother Manga. You understand? All the Lamborghinis that were being bought, all the, 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 the lavish lifestyle that they've been living. When that money that gave access to that lifestyle and that lavish lifestyle was gone, she was gone as well. Because if she was really a sister, she was going to be still be with him, but she's not. You see what I'm saying? We go back to Proverbs 6, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 26. Go ahead. For by means of a whorish woman, a mm -hmm. man is brought to a piece of bread. Read. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Guess what? That's all she's interested in. And that's what Sirach is teaching us here. You understand? She has no shame. She will do it because that's her game. That's her trade. You understand? That's the business. You are just a business deal. You are a business transaction. Once the transaction is done, she moves on to the next one. You understand? And that's what you've been seeing. Ever since that sister separated with Mandla, she's been, she's been jumping from man to man to man to man. And she cannot keep a relationship. She cannot get married. She's always moving from man to man to man to man. Every, anybody seen that? Because it's all over the news. One minute she's with this guy. The next minute she's with that guy. The next minute she's with that guy. Because the adulterers will hunt for the precious life. 
And guess what? Today, these young girls, they are following after that sister's footsteps. That's why they are blonding their hair. They are bleaching their skin now. She's teaching these young girls that aspire to be like her to hate themselves. So our job is to shut all that wickedness down with the word of the most High God. Whether they like to hear it or not, we don't care. We're going to bring it out as it is written. Understand that? Watch this. Give me, give, give me Deuteronomy 23 verse 17. We're still dealing with this shameless woman. You understand? This adulterous woman who has no shame. Read that. Deuteronomy 23 verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 17. Go ahead. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, mm -hmm. nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. That goes into these homosexual boys and all that. We, that, that is not allowed in Israel. Those brothers that are living homosexual lifestyle, they must repent. We love them, but they must repent from that filthy lifestyle. Okay, because that's not, they are going against the nation. That's not nation building. How are you going to build a nation when a man and a man, they are sticking rods in their behinds? When a baby going to come out? No. They are just satisfying and fulfilling their lusts. You understand? That's against the Bible. That's against the nation building process that we are embarking on. Because they are against the nation. Lesbians. They cannot give, a lesbian and a, a woman and a woman cannot bear a child. So guess what? They are anti-revolutionary. If we have to speak in a comrade tongue. They are anti-revolutionary comrade. Okay, watch this. Um, read that again, verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. Read. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Stop right there. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. No whore. What is a whore? A woman that sleeps around, she's not married. That's a whore according to the Bible. Next verse. I want to deal with the next verse now. Come on. Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore. The what? Or thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore. The hire of a whore. So the whore of the daughters of Israel that there is not allowed according to the commandments. He says, Thou shalt not. He says, There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Mo moreover, you shall not bring the hire of a whore. Don't bring that. that don't bring a hired whore. What is that? That's a prostitute today. They call it a girlfriend. You understand? A girlfriend is a hired whore because you didn't marry the sister. She's hired. Meaning what? She's only, she's with you temporarily because you've taken that sister for what? For last. Hold this. Give me Tobit 8, verse 7. Tobit chapter 8, verse 7. The hire of a whore. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore. Meaning a hired whore. Today we call it a girlfriend. Watch this. Tobit chapter 8 verse 7. Come on. Tobit chapter 8 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And now, O Lord, I take not this my sister for last. I take not, I take not this my sister for last. Meaning you're not just taking this sister just so you can sex the sister and when you are, when, then you just break up with the sister, you move on to the next sister. You understand? So it says, you must not take our sister for last. You must take your sister for marriage. That's why we're preparing our sisters, the sisters in the camp, where you are being prepared for marriage, not for somebody to take you for last. And don't marry for last either, because that marriage is not going to last. Read on. I take not, this is my sister for last, mm -hmm. but a brightly. But a brightly, meaning what? According to the law. Read. Therefore, Mercifully ordained that we may become aged together. Mercifully ordained that we may become aged together. If she's just a girlfriend, you're not going to become aged together. Because you're not going to endure the trials of being married. You're not going to go through life dealing with problems and waking them out, not bailing out on the marriage and all of that, because you are in a long-term and lifetime commitment. That's what marriage is, a lifetime commitment. A girlfriend and boyfriend, that's not a lifetime commitment. But an adulterous woman, she don't care about that. That's why you, you see a lot of sisters, they are involved with married men. And even if the man tells them, listen, I've got a wife, I've got, a chil I've got children, I've got a family, I'm married. He says, I don't care. As long as when I want you, I get you. 
That's all I care about. You hear these stories. You understand? And some sister will, they even say this, listen, I don't care. As long as when I, when I, when I want you, when I want my time with you, I get it. That's all I care about. You see what I'm saying? That's what they do. That's the reason why they do those things. So no shame. They don't care if they are destroying that man's house. This man also, he don't care. He don't care about his kids. He don't care about his wife. He don't care about his family. He don't care about his house. He don't care about his nation. As long as he gets his rocks off, as long as he can just ejaculate, that's all he cares about. You understand? That's not, these are not, that's not the mindset to build a nation. No, that's the nigga right there. Okay, he died, he old. That's not an Israelite, that's a darky. Okay, watch this. Let's go back. Deuteronomy 23, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 18. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a hoe mm -hmm. or the price of a dog. Stop right there. It says, Thou shalt not bring the hire of a hoe or the price of a dog. Because the adulterous woman, go back to Proverbs 6, verse 26, so we can get the context. Don't lose the thought. We're still dealing with that. He says, She will hunt for the precious life by any means necessary. Okay, Proverbs 6, verse 26 again. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 26. Go ahead. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, mm -hmm. and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. The adulterous woman will hunt for the precious life. She will hunt for the precious life so much so that she has a prize. She always has a prize because she's, she's hunting for that precious life. If she's hunting, that means she's going around doing a diligent search to see who she's going to ransack, who she's going to, who she's going to catch and who she's going to destroy. Once she's done destroying that man, because you cannot squeeze blood over, out of a stone, she moves on. You understand? So she always has a prize. So that means she's no, she's, she has no loyalty. Where She goes wherever the prize is high for her services. You understand? Because she's, she's running a business. So you see these sisters that have multiple men? She says, that's my minister of transport that right there. That's the minister of finance. That's the minister of housing right there. You understand? That's the minister of health. You understand? If that's the minister of food and, and food and all of that, minister of groceries. Mm -hmm. They've got different ministers. They've got different departments. And each department is bringing in a what is, is each department has a budget. That's how she looks at this. Each department has a budget. Minister of Transport, if I need to go to this place, I'm going to call that simp right there. If, I, if I'm not feeling well, I need to go to the doctor, I'm calling that simp right there because he's emotional, that one. If I, you see what, is that? She got game. These women got game and they will always catch the simp all the time. Okay, now go back to Deuteronomy 23 verse 18 again. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 18. Read. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a hoe or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For any vow, read. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So a hired hoe, a girlfriend, a pride, the price of a dog, a girlfriend. So a hired whore is, is what? It's a price dog. Meaning what? There's all she, that dog has a price. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Sarak 25. No, Sarak 26. Sarak 26. Watch this. Sarak chapter 26 and verse 25. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 25. Go ahead. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. That's the key right there. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Because this woman is, sh is shameless. That's why she's counted as a prized dog, like we read in Deuteronomy 23. A shameless woman will be counted as a dog. Because those of you that, that ever own dogs, because we've... I've, 
have owned dogs before and a female dog will disappear for days. A female dog will disappear for days and when it comes back, a couple of weeks later, you start to see your, that dog is pregnant now. You understand? And that dog will be sexed by multiple female dogs until she's satisfied and then she comes back. The Lord is, is comparing a female dog with a girlfriend. That's what the Lord is doing. The Lord is comparing a female, a, a, a girlfriend with a female dog. He says they are exactly the same because they are hired. It's only there for until, until you no longer need it, then you send it back to where it comes from. Just like you go to a DVD shop, you go to a DVD store to hire a DVD, a movie. They tell you, listen, return it, in, return it within 48 hours or whatever. And this is how much you must pay. If you want to extend it, the price gets, goes higher. No problem. As soon as I'm done with it, I'll take it back to the DVD store. That's the same concept here. A girlfriend is just like that. But a wife or a wife will be given to a man, a man of the Lord. But a female dog, a shameless woman will be given to a Negro who don't give a damn about this Bible. You understand? That's the point right there. This woman, she's shameless. She has no shame because what? She's always got a price. If the price is high, she goes over there. Read that again. Sarah 26, verse 25. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 25. Go ahead. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Mm -hmm. But she that is shame-faced will fear the Lord. But the woman that has shame will fear the Lord because she understands the commandments of the Most High. You know what she will do? Give me Tobit. Give me Tobit. Okay. Give me Tobit. Give me Tobit chapter 3 verse 14. Watch this. This is our sister, Sarah. Okay, watch this. Tobit chapter 3 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with man. You see what she's saying? It says, I am pure from all sin with men. Meaning I've not dealt with men. I've not been jumping from rod to rod to rod. You understand? Turning my vagina into a parachute. You see what I'm saying? You might think I'm being harsh, but let's hear what the Bible says. You see, the pastors will not read these things. We are doing this because we want our sisters to hear. Watch this. Give me Proverbs. Okay. I'm not jumping ahead, but... It's fine. It's okay. Proverbs 23, verse 27. Watch this. Proverbs 23, verse 27. Go ahead. For a hole is a deep ditch. You see what the Bible is saying? A hole is a deep ditch. That's a parachute VJJ. Because this VJJ has been dealing with many multiple men. Now it's huge. You understand? That's why a woman only is supposed to deal with one man. And that man is supposed to be, you, that's, that's the man that you're supposed to be with for the rest of your life. That's the reason why it's like that. That's why when sisters come into the truth, they've been dealing with multiple men in the world. Listen, you must give them three, two to three years for that parachute to flap back so that the Lord can heal her. But because you are deceived by, she's got a pretty face, You'll be surprised on the day of the May of the wedding, the day when you're supposed to go into the marriage chamber, you can't take it back. It's yours. You see that? That's why it's very important to listen to counsel. Don't be looking at a pretty sister with a pretty face and you don't know she's been what? She's been going around this sister. You don't know, you don't research, you don't prove, you just, you just, you are, you just her beauty kept you in prison. Now you can't get out of that prison. You can't apply the laws of God to get yourself out. Now you marry her, you realize, you discover on the night that guess what? She's going, the parachute is flapping in the wind. Now what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Okay, we are preventing that thing. You understand? Let's go back. Okay, let's go back to where we was at. Deuteronomy. Read that. Deuteronomy 
Chapter 23, verse 18. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore mm-hmm. or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. Ray. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So what I'm showing you is this, that the adulterers will hunt for the precious life. And guess what? The reason why she's hunting for this precious life, she's got a price. You understand? Wherever the price is right or the price is high, and the, she can what she can she can she can she can get that simp to pay for that price that she's she's putting up. Guess what? She will be there for a while, just so she can be able to suck that man everything that he's got, and that man will be brought to a piece of bread. He'll be brought to nothing. All the money will be gone. He'll just be he only the only thing will be left with is a name and shame attached to that name and you'll just be making noise on social media because that's what Mandla is doing now. He's just be making noise on social media. You understand? To stay relevant, now he's been called the sushi king and all of that. Listen, being brought to a piece of bread. Okay, watch this. Give me the, let's give an example. You know what I want, Genesis 38 with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Tamar. You understand? Tamar. Tamar had a price. This is the mindset of a shameless, adulterous woman. Genesis 38, verse 6. Watch this. Genesis chapter 38, verse 6. Go ahead. And Judah took a wife for her, his firstborn, mm-hmm. whose name was Tamar. Whose name was Tamar. So Tamar, Tamar was uh, the daughter-in-law to Judah, our forefather. Jump down to verse 13 now. Verse 13. Mm-hmm. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. Because guess what? I get the, the father-in-law, Judah, told her, listen, uh, I get the, the husband died. So now listen, listen, they said, listen, his younger brother, he's still young, but when he gets to an age of a man, then you can be married to him because that was the law. So when the father-in-law, Judah, left, you understand? She thought... He has forgotten, but he did not forget. She assumed that because of what? She was burning in her lust, and she didn't have the spirit of patience. Go ahead. And because she didn't have the spirit of patience, this is what she did. Read that. Verse 14 now. Come on. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. And she put her widow's garments off from her. She did what? And, and And she put her widow's garments off from her. Mm hmm and covered her with a veil. And she covered herself with a veil. Now, remember, she's a widow. A great husband died. She's supposed to mourn. In spade, that's what they call it in spade. Your husband that's died. I was just talking to the brother, this Uber, the Obri, the one that transports us when we go to camp. We were just talking about that. You understand? And he was making a point that these women today, they don't go through that. They don't, they don't mourn for their husband that dies. I don't know. They, they, she's supposed to wait and she's supposed to go and she must be washed and all of this stuff, purific, the purifying of women, like you read about in Esther and all of that stuff. She must what? But she must mourn for her husband that's dead. They don't do it today. That's why you see when they sleep with these men, these men just be dropping dead. You see what I'm saying? Because they don't mourn. Watch this. Give me Judith 8, verse 4. Let's see what our foremother did. Our foremother. Because our foremother, her husband died. You understand? She was mourning. Let's see how long she did that. Read that. Judith, chapter 8, verse 4. Go ahead. So Judith was a widow in her house three years and four months. You see that? Three years and four months. Three years, four months. That's some heavy stuff. The sisters of today don't do that thing. They don't even stay a month. Already, they've already dealing with another man somewhere else. They don't go through this. You understand? So let's go back now. Genesis 38, verse 14. Because this woman, Tamar, she didn't wait. She didn't wait like our foremother Judith did. And while she was waiting, as younger brother was going to do what? He's busy growing to get to the age of a man. Okay, come on. 
Genesis chapter 38, verse 14. Read. And she put her widow's garment off from her mm -hmm. and covered her with the veil Read. and wrapped herself. Come on. And sat in an open place. She did which what? Which is by the way. And sat in an open place. He sat in an open place, meaning where, where people will be, it's going to be easy for people to see her. That open place is the place where prostitutes go to. That's the streets. She's hunting. You understand? But she's got one target in the mind. Her father-in-law. Go ahead. And sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timna. Mm -hmm. For she saw that Shila was grown, and she was not given unto him to wife. She was not given unto him. He was, she was not given unto him to wife. You understand? So she became impatient because this man was not around. Go ahead. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot. He did what? Because he thought her to be an harlot. He thought her, he thought her to be an harlot. So Judah, our father, forefather, he thought this woman is a prostitute because that's how prostitutes dressed like. You see how these Muslim women be wearing? They be covering their faces and all that. We're not talking about the long dresses. The long dresses, that's fine. But the way they cover their faces where they look like ninjas. That's how prostitutes used to dress back then. So our, our, this woman, Tema, that's what she did. She did that. Go ahead. He thought her to be an harlot because she had covered her face. You see that thing? She, he thought he was a, she was a whore because she covered her face. Right? And he turned to her by the way. Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. Mm -hmm. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. Come on. And she said, what, what wilt thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? You see that she's asking for a price. She's shameless that way. So much so that she always has a price. That's what we read in Deuteronomy. She always has a price. What are you going to give me that you may have sex with me? Because Judah is asking, it says what? Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. Meaning, let me have sex with you. For, she, for he knew not that she was in, she was her daughter in, she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, what will thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me, that you may have sex with me? She all, the, the shameless adulterous woman always has a price. That's why it says, now go back to Deuteronomy 23 verse 18. So we don't lose the thought. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 18. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the, the house of the Lord or the price of a dog. Or the price of a dog. The price of a dog. Remember, it says a shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. So this is a, she was a shameless woman, Tema. She shall be counted as a dog because she, has a, she had a prize on what? On, for men having sex with her. Just like a female dog, she's acting like one. A girlfriend is just like that. Because a girlfriend, when a, when a woman that is a girlfriend meets somebody somewhere else, maybe she goes to another city, she knows she's got a boyfriend. And when she gets there, the men in that, in that area, in that neighborhood, guess what they will do? They ask her, do you have a boyfriend? Because when she goes to the new city, people are gonna be looking at her. Mm, that's a beautiful sister right there. She loves the attention. Guess what? There's one that, that one brother that is going to be able to get with him, with her. And she will allow that. Why? Because of the attention. She has a prize. When she gets there, she sees, you know, brother with big muscles. You understand? You know, these gaily looking type of brothers, you know, they be with ponytails and all that. Mm -hmm. She fall for that Negro. The brother that wakes up in the morning, be kissing his biceps. Mm, that type of brother. That brother, she will fall for him because she always has a prize. You understand? That's why that 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 show, Barki Ujola 99. Why do you think that show exists? Ujoria Jola 99. Yes, that show exists because of what we are reading it. A shameless woman always has a prize. And when because I, I would watch sometimes, I would watch the episodes, and it's always the same thing. No, this and the brothers, the simps. 
these brothers be complaining you know you know when you know you know when you know regular this game regular this i should say you know either x y and z but ujwala le damane jamano na le transi na gna transi damano dula go di sabapo na glo mi go di sabapo glo mako kas so on and so forth he always has a prize that's why jup jup made that show because of what homangering men and horish adulterous shameless women that's why that show exists okay watch this go back to proverbs 6 verse 26 Proverbs chapter 6 verse 26. Go ahead. For by means of a horish woman a mm -hmm. man is brought to a piece of bread. A man is adulterous. brought. Hold on. A man is brought to a piece of bread. So that means that this man was on a level, right? This woman, give me Proverbs 14 verse 1. Let me tell you what type of woman this is. Proverbs 4 chapter 14 verse 1. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Come on. But the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. That's the adulterous woman. That shameless woman, that she's the one that does this. Every wise woman buildeth her house. She doesn't do this, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. That's the adulterous woman. The adulterous woman is that foolish woman that plucks the house down. This man is established, he's running businesses and this woman right here because she's a foolish woman she's going to destroy this man everything that is built and he's going to allow her to do it why because he has fallen for those things that are precious in her the big booty the pretty face the weave the makeup you see that thing yes and she doesn't have skills the only skill she got is to make it clap that's the point you understand that's why there's many have fallen because of women brought to a piece of bread Read that thing again. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1. Go ahead. Every wise woman buildeth her house, mm -hmm. but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. But the foolish woman will pluck this house down until what? The only thing that will be left will be that man looking like a piece of bread, a crumb of what he used to be. Let's go back now. Proverbs 6 verse 26 once again. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 26. Go ahead. For by means of a whorish woman, mm -hmm. a man is brought to a piece of bread. Right. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. The adulteress is always after the precious life, that lavish lifestyle. I mean, look at it, right? Look at um, that boy. I think he's a, some kind of a rugby player, right? Is he a rugby player? Um, he's in, in South Africa. What's his name? Sia yeah, Sia something, right? He's married to an Edomite. So they met in high school, whatever. Then, okay. But guess what? That whole family, that whole family of that woman, guess what? They have access to that money. That whole family. Because in the US, what happens, what they do is, you see these, 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 these white men, it's not just them. It's not just Edomites. It's white men is... Um, the Elamites, meaning East Indians, they do it as well. Um, Chinese, not so much. I don't know if they started doing it, but I know Elamites, Elamites, and not Muslims, but Edom and Elam, they do that a lot. So what they do is they, they go to these basketball games and they buy the VIP tickets. They buy the VIP, the VIP tickets, they take their daughters there. Their daughters that are, that are, you know, 18 and over, you understand? They be wearing promiscuously. They are going there to do what? To entice these basketball players. So they can catch them. And now they are going to be living through their daughter because the daughter is married to this basketball player and is making millions. Give me that in Leviticus 19. Because the Lord is against that thing. You understand? Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Read that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Go ahead. Do not prostitute thy daughter mm -hmm. to cause her to be a whore. You see that thing? 
So that's what they are doing. They are prostituting their own daughters so that they can live through their daughters and cash in. You understand? And because these basketball players, they are promiscuous, they are whoremongers, they always be dealing with other women when they travel. And when they do that, there's a huge scandal. He cheated. Now they say, no, I want a divorce. He takes half of everything he's got. You see that? That's what they do. Look at the history of the, the Kardashians. Those of you sisters that like to watch the, the Kardashian, keeping up with the Kardashians, the, those Kardashians, are any of them married? No, none. None of them are married. They've got kids, but none of them are married. They get married, their marriages don't last. And when the divorce happens, they get half of the men's uh, assets and all of that. You see it. Because the adulterers will hunt for the precious life. Okay, watch this. Um, now, the next characteristics is she catches men. Let me fix that. She catches simps. That's, that's got a nice ring to it. She catches simps. A simp. You understand? She catches men that practice simp simpology. That's, that, that's, she, she's looking for those men that had degrees in this thing. PhDs, yeah. Simpology. They specialize in that. She knows their degrees. She knows their credentials. Simps. Specializing in simpology. Watch this. Proverbs 7 verse 4. Come on. Proverbs 7 verse 4. Go ahead. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, mm -hmm. and call understanding thy kinswoman. He says, you must what? You must say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. Because you are, you, must, you are close. You must be that close. You understand? With wisdom. And call understanding thy kinswoman. Because what? You are close. You are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are bone of your bone. You are family. So you are close. You understand? Keep going. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. Because that's what wisdom will do. If you call wisdom your sister or understanding your kinswoman, meaning what? It, you must be that close with wisdom. Just like you're close to your sister, just like you're close to your kinswoman. You must be like that when it comes to wisdom of the Lord. Read that again. And when you are like that, you have a close relationship with that. Guess what? That wisdom that the Lord will bestow upon you will keep you away from a strange woman. Read that again, verse 5. Proverbs 7, verse 5. Mm -hmm. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. Read. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. And from the stranger which flattereth with her words. I think I was watching the... There's a clip I saw, right? I don't know if I can find it now, but there's a clip I saw, I think called Disky Divas, right? Disky Divas. I think it's some kind of a reality show, right? In Zanzi. And I yes, think sir. this woman was talking about, I think there's a famous football player, right? I think one of them is uh, married to that famous football player. What's his name? I think it's Osa or something. Some famous football player. I forgot his name now. Is it, what's his name? Uh, you brothers. There's a famous That's football just, player that, um, you must watch these things, eh? So you can understand. Let me see. Hmm. Um, I ah, uh, now I can't find it now. You know, I don't remember that episode. But Disky Divas, yeah, something of that sort. Um. So, but this woman, she was saying that um, that man. He, she was the one that was pushing him to be successful the way that he is. And he depends on her. You understand? And she was saying that um, when he started, he was not, he didn't have any skill and all of that. And she's the one that uh, put, put, put him, she's the one that uh, pushed him to get to that level. Which means that she was saying, and, you know, I have him wrapped, in, wrapped around my finger. Meaning she controls the relationship. That's what I'm, I'm actually get, getting to. 
But the point is this. Read that again, verse 5. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 5. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, mm -hmm. from the stranger which flattereth with her words. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. So there's a Roman, uh, I think that that's a Roman philosophy, right? Where during the time of the Greeks and the Romans, when you watch, because there's a documentary on Netflix, for those that don't have Netflix, shame on you, okay? Netflix, right? There's a documentary called the Roman Empire, and they give you the history of the Rome, Rome, Rome right? And one of them said something like, we run the world and the women run us. Something like that. We run the world and the women, they run us. We rule the world, we run the world and the women rule us. That's a Roman, that, that's a Greek and Roman culture. Greek and Roman culture, that's how it is. Today, because we have adopted that, we are moving the same way as a nation. You see our brothers and sisters out there in the media and all, that's how they move. The wealthy ones and all, they are controlled by their, their, their women. And now society has normalized that thing so much so that you can't tell them nothing. You understand? Watch this. Mm. Jump down to verse 7. Proverbs 7, verse 7. You see, this woman, she catches the simps. Okay, read verse 7. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And beheld among the simple ones. And I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. Because she can sift out that if you are a simp or not. She can tell. You just fall for the looks. Got you. Go ahead. Passing through the streets near her corner, and he went the way to her house. He did what? And he went the way to her house. He went the way to her house. You see, there's no proving, there's no nothing. Because of what? this You see, the, the, the adulterous women, they are generally attractive. They are, they, are, they are attractive. They are always bare to the bone. But you don't know the software that's running on that system. You don't know the software. You understand? You can see the make and the model, but you don't know how the, angel, the engine behaves. You don't know if she's a dragon. You don't know if she's disrespectful. You don't know the, the family she comes from. You don't know how her mother dealt with her father. You don't know. You don't know. Okay? Keep going. No, jump down to verse 10. Verse 10. And behold, they made him a woman with the attire of an harlot mm -hmm. and subtle of heart. So now it says, and they made him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Meaning this woman, she got game. And she's got an evil heart. She always has a she's always has a game on. She there's always an agenda. You understand? That's why it says subtle of heart. She's evil. She will destroy you. But the way she catches you is what her attire is what catches you. The way she dresses. Because you are lustful, guess what? She knows lustful men. She knows men that she cannot even she does not even go anywhere close to. Why? Because she knows that that one right there, he's not my type and I'm not his type. Why? Because he's going to tell me where to get off. So I'm not going to go anywhere near that brother. But guess what? The simps, she will what? She will go and catch those ones. Read that again. Verse 10. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. Mm -hmm. And behold, they met him a woman with the attire of an harlot Read. and subtle of heart. Come on. She is loud and stubborn. She is loud and stubborn. She's loud because today, um, well, yeah, during the day, right? Here's what happened. So I went to the plantation. When I got to the plantation, um, we had a meeting there. And then from there, we had to go for drinks, right? Then we go to a spot near Anamola Centurion. I think some chisa nyama there. So they went there, they bought food and they ordered drinks. So I think I was talking to Brother Ndranke. And when we were outside, right, the brother that uh, from work, he said, do you know that all these women, all these uh, cars here, 
90% is driven by women. I'm like, why do you say that? He's like, you'll see when we go in. As we walk in, the tables then, and he was right, 90% of the tables was filled with women. And the tables that were, sing the tables that were not, women was not on those tables, it was just a, a man by himself. One guy eating, drinking his beer, smoking his cigarette. Then you've got maybe two or three brothers, you know, surrounding a bucket there, wind hook. And in there is like eyes and what, and booze in there. But the point is, the women, they know where to go to catch men. I mean, I saw a lot of sisters that were just by themselves, but surrounded like 10 sisters on one table. There's all this beer here. They are dressed promiscuously and all of that. They are taking selfies, posting on WhatsApp and Instagram. You understand? And they were in, they were just different groups, different clans. Women drinking more than the men and the number of women outnumbered the number of men that was there. Because they know where to go to catch the simps. You see a brother just sitting there, this one brother, you understand? He didn't come with us, but he was sitting there and he's just sitting there just, and you can see that they are just looking at him like, look at that simp right there. Just look at the simp. The other sisters, you see men, they go to the sisters, right? And then they talk to the sisters maybe for like two minutes and then they all get up. I get the, 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 the way they dress, they are there to shop. They are, they are, going, to, they are going shopping, by the way. They are shopping for men because they know we're going to catch sims, men that are lustful, booze involved, women involved. You know what happens next? Sex, one night stands and so forth. They go to corners. They take in selfies with these women they just met. And these women don't even resist. They go nicely. They be taking pictures and selfies, hugging each other as if they know each other. No, from there, the women go back to their, to their table and the men go to their own table and then life goes on. I'm sitting there, I'm like, what the hell? Yes, sisters, you better praise the Lord you are in this truth. Brothers, praise the most High God that you are in here. Understand that thing. Listen, it's rough out there. It is rough out there. Don't, listen, read that thing again. Verse 10. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. Go ahead. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. Read. And subtle of heart. And subtle of heart because they know how to hunt men. You understand? They know how to catch the simps. They can sniff a simp out. Read. Verse 11. Verse 11. She is loud and stubborn. She is loud and stubborn. Go ahead. Her feet abide not in her house. You see what the Bible is saying? It says she's loud and stubborn. Because they, there was a lot of sisters there. They were drunk. That was loud. And you can see that those sisters, you cannot tell them nothing. And those that came with sisters there, guess what? The man was just quiet, like a church mouse. The woman, is, the woman that he came with, she's the one that's running her mouth with Amstel Lager in her, in her hand. And I'm sitting, the man, the woman is sitting, she's slouching. The man is sitting so straight, you understand? Like he swallowed a stick. He's sitting so straight, 90 degree angle. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? The woman is slouching here. She's the man, she's wearing pants, she's loud. She's speaking loud. And I'm like, that's what we're reading here. Right here, she's loud and she's stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. She's not taking care of the house. She's not cleaning. She don't know how to cook. You're always eating takeout. She don't know how to wash the dishes. And when she does, you have to go behind and be re-washing the stuff. They don't know how to do nothing. They must be taught. Guess what? Today, that's the black woman today. They are out there in the streets, gallivanting, kitty strut mate. That's what they call it in Venek. The strut mate. They are always in the streets. What are they doing? Keep going. Verse 12. Read. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 12. Now she's without. She's outside now. She Because remember it says her feet abide not in her house. She's not a Titus 2 woman. She's not a Proverbs 31 woman. Guess what? This is a whorish woman right here. She's always hunting for the precious life. And she knows ways to go to catch that precious life. She knows she's going to get the simps. 
You understand? And they know where, where they go to the, these pubs, these shisanyamas and all of that, they find, well, they find rich men. Rich men that are stressed out about their controlling wives at home. You understand? And when they go there, they want to release the stress. And when they see there, they see strange women that will flatter them, that will give them all the attention that they don't get it when they are with their wives. You understand? And guess what? They know how to, they know how to, how to deal with that man, to make him forget about the issues that he's having in his house. They know how to do it because that's the business. Read that thing again, verse 12. Proverbs 57, verse 12. Go ahead. Now is she without. Mm -hmm. Now in the streets. In the way. Now in the streets. Now in the streets. Remember we read earlier says what? In the open place. She, she goes into the open. Where? In the streets. Where she's going to be seen. And when she goes out there, the way she dresses, she will attract the simps. Those horny Negroes who cannot control their loins. Read. And lieth in wait at every corner. And lieth in wait at every corner. So, because even when we were leaving, I mean, there were women standing outside waiting for men that go out to talk to them so the men can take them home with them. That's the, listen, you see out there, there's some evil, wicked stuff going on out there. Praise the Lord for the shed of the might of the almighty upon us. Okay, watch this. Give me Proverbs 23, verse 28. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 28. Proverbs 23, verse 28. Go ahead. She also lieth in wheat as for a prey mm -hmm. and increaseth the transgressors among men. And increases the transgressors among men. Her job is to increase the sinners among the simps. That's her job. Her job is to do that. It says, she also lieth, she also. Not only because the men, the, the sims that go out there, because they sim go out there to meet women. She not realizing what these women, they know the game better than he does. When they get there, they know exactly oh, that's that. They know the types. They know how to classify them. This one falls into this category. You're going to deal with him. This one, he falls into that category. That's your department. They know that whole thing. That's why the she also lieth in wait as for a prey and increases the transgressors among men. Her job is to destroy men. She catches them, she destroys them. That's why everybody the slay queen. Why do you think they call themselves that? The slay queen. Yes. What does it mean to slay? To kill. You see, brothers don't investigate stuff. A slay queen. Think about it. Somebody is a slave queen. Where you go, you're going to die. That's where you're going. You understand? A slave is a sheep led to the slaughter. A slave queen. She's going to destroy you. She will catch you. She will slay you. When she's done with you, she moves on. You understand? Read that thing again. Proverbs 23, verse 28. Go ahead. She also lieth in wait as for a prey mm -hmm. and increases the transgressors among men. And increases the transgressors among men. Watch this. Go to Proverbs 7, verse 22. We're going to read down. Proverbs 7, verse 22. Mm -hmm. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter. You see that thing? That's why it says she increases the transgressors among men. She layeth in wait as for a prey and increases the transgressors among men because she's a slave queen. Where is she leading him? Read that again, verse 22. Proverbs 7, verse 22. Read. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter. You ever seen an ox going to a slaughter? That's how she leads men because they are going to be slaughtered. They are going to be slain. She's a slay queen to kill these men, to increase transgressors among men. Read. Or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. 
You see that thing, a fool to the correction of the stocks like they did to Jeremiah. He was a prophet. He wasn't a fool. He was a mighty prophet. But that's how they punished Jeremiah. But guess what? He says, you because you are, you are a, young man, a young man filled with youthful lust and void of understanding, guess what? She's what, what? You are going, she's going to lead you as a fool to the correction of stocks. Ray, come on. Till a dart strike through his liver. You see that thing? Death. A dart is going to strike through your liver. Ray. And as a bird, haste it to the snare. Mm. And knoweth not that it is for his life. It is for his life, meaning you're going to die. But because your lust is so deep in you, you ignore all the red flags. You just keep going. Your lust is what's driving you. And this woman, she knows that she knows the degree of your lust and what you are willing to do for that lust, for your lust to be fulfilled. She knows already. She, that's why it says she will hunt for the precious life. When somebody that is hunting, that means they have tact, they have strategy, they know how to deal. You see, some of brothers, some of you brothers, you are very you are you are sleepy when it comes to women. That's why King Solomon's mother told, listen, don't give your soul over to women because they are going to destroy you if you don't, if you if you if you don't watch out. That's what we're reading here. Is a till a dart strike him strike through his liver as a bird hasted to the snare and knoweth not that it is for his life. You understand? She knows the game. She knows how to play you. She will play you. That's why you ever seen in movies, they be the, the, there's, there's the prostitutes, some movies where they, 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 there's prostitution going on. They have things called the girlfriend experience. Ever, anybody ever hear, ever, ever hear that term? The girlfriend experience? Hello? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Yeah, no. Go ahead for God, because you just came out of high school. The hell is this? <laughs> now, the, the girlfriend experience is that the normal prostitute you pay, but the girlfriend experience is the one that she's going to tell you for the weekend, this is how much I want. That's the girlfriend experience. She's able to go with you to the shops. You can go shopping with her and so on and so forth. The girlfriend experience. And on the girlfriend experience, you must still spend money. Not only that, you must pay for the fact that she's there because if she was not with you, she could be dealing with a hundred clients that she's dealing with and she will make that money triple fold. You see, there's different business models in this game. And these adulterous women, shameless women, they know that thing. You understand? That's why they've got pimps. Why do you think the pimps are so rich? They got so much, they got so much money, is because they under they have a business model. Okay. Watch this. Read verse 20. Read verse 24. No, read Proverbs verse 25. Chapter. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 25. Come on. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Mm. Go not astray in her parts. Don't go astray in her path because she's going to lead you to what to the slaughter. That's why they are called slay queens. I'm gonna have a dedicated class about that. Slay queens. Go ahead. Verse 26. For she hath cast down many wounded. She has cast down many wounded. Many have many have been wounded because of what? Because of this adulterous woman who whose hands for the precious life. Read. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. You see that thing? Slay queens. Many men have been slain by her. What is she called? A slay queen. Write that down. You better write that note down on that verse. As this, this, is, this is the Bible is describing slay queens right here. Go ahead. Her house is, her house is the way to hell. Read. Going down to the chambers of death. Mm, read that again, verse 27. Proverbs 7, verse 27. Her house is the way to hell. Mm -hmm. Going down to the chambers of death. You see, her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. There is very self-explanatory. Self She's going to destroy you. You understand? She will destroy you. That's why they are called slave queens. 
But the simp, he don't investigate where that, where that term comes from or what does it mean. She don't care about that. She don't, he don't care about none of that because your lust is so deep that you will ignore all of those things. No, I'm a slave queen. She'll tell you I'm a slave queen. They be saying it, I'm a slave queen. Mm -hmm. Okay. She will destroy you, all right? Watch this. Like I said, they know where to hunt for the simps to, so that they can catch them. Watch this. Give me Sarah 19, verse 2. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verse 2. Sarah 19, verse 2. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 2. Come on. Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. You see what wine and women does? And the women knows this, by the way. The women, they know this. It says wine and women will make. It's not if or maybe. Mm -mm. The Lord says will, meaning it's a fact. Wine and women will make a man, will make men of understanding to fall away into sin. The women know this. That's why they, they, they all these shisanyamas and this is packed with women all the time. Why? Because the women know what wine, the impact wine has on a man. They know it. They know. And if because these women, they be drinking just like the men, if not more. So now the man seeing the woman getting drunk, you understand, pop drunk, and he's getting drunk. What do you think goes on in his mind? Sex. What's going on in his mind is not, you know what? I want to find out if does she want kids? Does she want does she want kids? Uh, is she marriage material? Can she cook? She can she clean? Is she respectful? It, he's not, not he's not thinking about none of that stuff. He's only thinking about how to I'm going to fulfill my last now. Read that again, verse two. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 2. Go ahead. Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. Mm -hmm. And he that cleaveth to a harlot will become impudent. And he that cleaveth to a harlot will become impudent. Impudent means uh, shameless. He that cleaveth to a harlot will become impudent. Because I kill you are cleaving to them because of what? Why? Wine and women will, will what? will destroy your sound mind. The laws of God are going to be out the window at that point. You understand? Sarah chapter 9 verse 9. Watch this. Sarah 9 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 9. Come on. Sit not at all with another man's wife. Mm. Nor sit down with her in thine arms. Read. And spend not thy money with her at the wine. Stop right there. He says, don't sit with an, man, another man's wife. Don't sit with her in your arms and spend not thy money with her at the wine. Because what? wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. That's what he's saying right there. Because wine and women, when they're mixing, guess what happens? Adultery gets committed. Fornication gets committed. You understand? All kinds of evil go down when wine and women mix together and with the men. Men know this. Women know this. So men that go there, they are looking for that those type of women that are shameless, that are there to catch them. And they don't mind it. I had a brother. This was many years ago, long, long time ago. He said, you know what? Because we were coming from Limpopo. Now we are in Pretoria, okay? Because we, we came because we came in, we come in to study. Okay, fine. He said something like, he's a teacher now. He said, I'm working, I have money. If my money is going to be spent, I would rather be eaten by women, I don't mind. That's what he was saying. That's what he said. i will rather be eaten by women, I don't mind. Because why am I making this all this money for? I'm making it for women so they can eat the money. That's the mindset. That's the mindset of many simple simps, okay? If I can say that. Read that again, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Sit not at all with another man's wife, nor sit down with her in thine arms, and spend not thy money with her at the wine. Read. Lest thine heart incline unto her, 
because you're gonna and fall so, for this woman. Hold on, you're gonna fall for her because you are horny. The only thing you want is to sex the woman. She also wants to do that same thing to you. Go ahead. And so through thy desire, thou fall into destruction. Because of your lust, you're gonna fall into destruction. Because of your lust, you are going to fall into destruction. Give me that in Sarah 23. Sarah 23, verse 17. You know what? Start at verse 16. Read 16 and 17 together. Sarah 23, verse 16. Read that. Ecclesiastes 23, verse 16. Go ahead. Two sorts of women, two sorts of men multiply sin. Mm -hmm. And the third will bring wrath. A hot mind is as a burning fire. It will never be quenched till it be consumed. Come on. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till he had kindled a fire. You see what the Bible is saying? A fornicator, meaning what? A man that commits sexual sins. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease, meaning he's not going to stop fornicating till he had kindled a fire. What is that fire? He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna subject himself to that sin. That sin will eventually destroy him. Next verse. Come on. Verse seventeen. Mm -hmm. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Come on. He will not leave off till he die. So guess what? He says all sweet is bread. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger, right? Imagine this: when men get drunk, every woman is attractive now. That's what wine will do for you. That's what alcohol does. When you are sober, you can see, oh, that's an attractive sister right there. That's, an, that's a nice sister right there. The minute you get drunk, everybody is attractive now. You understand? That's why it says, all bread is sweet to a homanga. He will not live off till he die. Meaning the only thing that is going to kill this fornicator in the body of his flesh is death. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Sarah 26 verse 8. Ecclesiastes 26 verse 8. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 26 verse 8. Mm -hmm. A drunken woman and a gather abroad causes great anger. Because guess what? When women get drunk, they are loud. They start to speak loud. They are obnoxious. They are disrespectful. That demonic character comes all the way out. Read. Right? And she will not cover her own shame. She's not going to cover her own shame. Look at the way the sisters drink. Because I saw it. I saw it today. They were, listen, they were drinking like there's no tomorrow. They were drinking like, because Esau has mastered the art of fornication. Music, alcohol, women, simps. When you put those two, those, all those ingredients in the pot, just apply heat. You see how Negroes move. You understand? That's what the Lord is teaching us here. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs 31 verse 4. Proverbs. Because once, that's why it says in, in Sirach 19 verse 2, wine and woman will make men of understanding to fall away. Watch this. This is what Solomon's mother taught him. Proverbs 31 verse 4. Come on. Proverbs 31 verse 4. Mm -hmm. It is not for kings or limb well. It is not for kings to drink wine. Nor for princes, strong drink. Nor for princes, strong drink. Because guess what? You must only drink. Give me Sarah 31, 27. He's not saying don't drink wine or strong drink. But what she's saying is this. Sarah 31, verse 27. Ecclesiastes chapter 31, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Wine is as good as life to a man. If it be drunk moderately. You see that thing? You can drink wine, but you must drink it in moderation. Because when you drink in excess, guess what happens? Let's go back. Here's what happens when you drink in excess. Proverbs 31 verse 4 again. Proverbs 31 verse 4. Read. It is not for kings, or Lemuel. Well. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor... No for princes, strong drink. Come on. Lest they drink and forget the law. That's the key right there. 
Lest they drink and forget the law. Come on. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Now they start to what? They start to break. They start to go outside of God's commandments. They start to fight others. They start to cause confusions. Now all of a sudden, everybody is just fighting. Why? Because you cannot control yourself when you are drunk. So that's why it says wine and women, they don't mix. They will make men of understanding to fall away. Because what? He says you're going to forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. You understand? That's why. Watch this. But the women, they know this because it says wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. You think women don't know this? Of course they do. That's why they go to those places. And without a fail, every day, they will always catch men. Without a doubt. Watch this. Give me that in uh, Sirach 26, 23. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 23. Go ahead. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. You see that? A wicked woman will be given as a portion to a wicked man because a wicked man goes there to catch women. A wicked woman goes there to catch men. You understand? So the most I will say, okay, you are going there. No, no, you are going there to catch, to look for these women. Don't worry. I've got something for you. I'm going to give you a gift that will keep on giving. So now what's happening here is the Lord will give you that if you are wicked, if you are not wicked, the Lord will give you that which is proportional to where you are spiritually. You understand? Keep going. But a godly woman is given to him that fear the Lord. So a godly woman will be given to that brother that keep God's commandments. You understand? Now, but what I want to show you here is Remember, these women, they go over there to catch. They know where to go to catch these men. And they know the type of conditions that must have these men in in order for them to catch them. Once they catch them, they're going to slay them because guess what they are? They are slave queens. Okay, watch this. Give me Sirach 9 verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 2. Give not thy soul unto a woman. To mm. set her foot upon thy substance. Meaning what? To disrespect you. To set her foot upon thy substance. Let me give an example of that. Give me, pro, give me Deuteronomy 23. Mm. Deuteronomy chapter 23, read verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1. Go ahead. He that is wounded in the stones... Mm. or have his privy member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So now, read that part again. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 1. Mm. He that is wounded in the stones. He that is wounded has... in the stones. Hold on. He that is wounded in the stones, meaning what? His balls have been cut off or wounded because they've been cut off or kicked. Go ahead. Or had his privy member cut off. Or had his, his balls cut off. Read. Shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. The Lord can use you because guess where your balls are at? In your woman's purse. Now, what I'm showing you here is, is when it says, don't give thy soul unto women. Yes. Because when you give your soul unto women, guess what they have? They have your balls in their purse, in their handbag. You understand? Watch this. And I'm going to prove, I'm going to give an example. Because in these places where women and men go and meet for sexual desires and, and satisfaction and all that, this is what usually happens. And guess what? You meet a sister there, you marry that sister there. Guess what? Whenever it's the weekend, she will always wants to go back there. Because wait a minute, you met me in the club. So now you don't want me to go there. You will always have fights about those things. Why? Because She'll, she, and she will go without your consent. You'll say, no, you're not going there. Guess what she will do? She will go there anyway. She will hook up with her girlfriends that are not married and she will go there. She will meet another man because she's upset. You know, he doesn't want me to go out. He doesn't want to go out. Whatever. They go back and she goes over there. Somebody else sexes her. That's what happens. Watch this. Sarah, give me Deuteronomy 25 verse 11. 
I'll give an example. I'm going to show you like uh, the, the, the adulterous woman, she knows how to what? She cut the man's balls off. She wounds the man's stones. Because you understand? I mean, that, that's, that's part of your manhood. I'm not saying that's your manhood, but that's part of it. Because keeping the commandments first and foremost, that's what makes you a man. But this is also part of your manhood. Or have his privy member cut off. Or his stones cut off, right? Watch this. A lot of the times, these women that control these men, these adulterous, shameless women, this is what happens when conflict arises. Watch what they do. Watch this. Deuteronomy 25 verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 11. Go ahead. When men strive together, one with another. Now, these two men, men are striving together, meaning there's a fight between men. Go ahead. And the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smited him. So now, this, this man is being beaten by this other man. The wife of the one that is being beaten she wants now to deliver the, her husband out of this fight. Right? Go ahead. And putteth forth her hand and taketh him by the secrets. You see that part right there? And taketh, and what? And taketh him by the secrets. Meaning she grabs his balls. So isn't that the... You don't see that happening today? Let's say men... Men will, and as a fight will start, right, between men, all of a sudden, the woman is in the middle of it. She's the one that is, she's loud. She speaks loud. She cries. She does all of these things, and everybody's going to say, hey, bro, what's wrong with you? You understand? Now he's going to be as if, like, now you want to beat the woman. Guess what she just did? She just grabbed you by your balls. Not by the other men, but he's talking about the other men, but she just did that with you because now she's fighting your fights. She's fighting your battles. That's the same thing going on today. That's why a lot of the times you'll be hearing brothers, um, you hear it in the world, um, brothers will be saying, let's say there's a decision that needs to be made among men. There'll always be that one simple brother say, I need to talk to my wife first. Men are having a business discussions of what decisions need to be made and so forth so we can start business operations. He's going to say, no, I need to talk to my wife first. You know, the minister of finance, you know, she controls all the finances. I need to speak to the boss. They always say that. And it's like, it's, it's a normal thing. No, that's not a normal thing. But they make it a normal thing. No, I need to, I need to speak to the boss, the boss lady. They, they say it like that. Hey, I need to speak to Merem. Yes. I found cool men or Merem. Why? Because this woman has taken him by the secrets. You see, they know how to work men. You understand? They know how to do it. So you brothers, you better learn this thing. You sisters too. Okay, watch this. Um, go back to Ecclesiastes 9 verse 2 again. I just wanted to give that example. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 2. Give not thy soul unto a woman mm -hmm. to set her foot upon thy substance. To set her foot upon thy substance because she's not supposed to do that. You must always maintain the preeminence. Watch this. Um, keep going. Read on. Verse 2. Meet not with an harlot. Mm. Let's, let's now fall into her snares. The snares is what? Disease. The coochie. The coochie is a snare. It's a trap. Some men have run out of their wits for the coochie. All the evil thing that these women is doing, guess what? Because the coochie, you are drunk in that coochie juice. You can't, you can't detox from it. She got you now. Read that again, verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 3. Go ahead. Be not with an harlot, lest mm. thou fall into her snares. Does thou fall into her snares, she'll give you a disease. She'll get you killed. You understand? Read. 
use not use not much the company of a woman that is a stranger mm -hmm. that is a singer that is a what that is a singer it says use not much the company of a woman that is a singer we're going to explain that in a second come on lest thou be taken with her attempts because she'll be attempting to do what to snare to catch you she'll be attempting to do what to destroy you to slay you so but it says don't use much the company of a woman that is a singer a woman that flatters with her tongue watch this give me isaiah 23 verse 15 a woman that will flatter with her tongue okay that's why the scripture says let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of christ isaiah 23 verse 15 come on isaiah chapter 23 verse 15 go ahead and it shall come to pass in that day that tyree shall be forgotten 70 years Mm -hmm. according to the days of one king after the end of 70 years shall tyree sing as an harlot shall tyree do what shall tyree sing as an harlot it says shall tyree sing as an harlot the scripture says use not much the company of a woman that is a singer lest thou be taken with her attempts this is the destruction of what this is the destruction of um, it's talking about Tyree, but it's a metaphor for America. America is the great hall. You understand? Is the woman that is sitting upon that scarlet colored beast in Revelation 17? Yes. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 23, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in that day that Tyree shall be forgotten 70 years according to the days of one king. Mm -hmm. After the end of 70 years, shall Tyree sing as an harlot? Tyree will sing as an harlot. Watch this. Come on. Take and hop. Go about the city. Mm -hmm. Thou harlot that has been thou harlot that has been forgotten. Thou harlot that has been what? Thou harlot that has been forgotten. That's America, right? That goes into America. Thou harlot that has been forgotten. Read. Really? Make sweet melody. Sing many songs that thou mayest be remembered. He says, sing many songs that thou mayest be remembered. Because you see what it says in Sirach 9, when it says um, a woman that is a singer. Listen to the, the music that is coming out from these women. The women that used to be strippers, Bukari B, Megan Stallion. Um, who else? Uh, Nicki Minaj. Okay. There's the 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 lyric their lyrical content is about what booty, how good they are, how good they can write a man, how good they can control a man, and so all of that, and it's all based on the coochie. Now the attempt is the words they use in their lyrics. You listening to that already? Guess what? You are lusting over them. You are looking for women that are what that resemble those people that are singing those songs. That's what you are seeing. That's why now you see these women that are listening to Nicki Minaj, Megan and Stallion, Cardi B. How do they dress now? They dress just like them. They have the same weaves that they do, not the same amount, but they have weaves as well. They dress the same way. They listen to the same lyrics and all of that. They act like them. The men that listening to those women as well, guess what they do? They go out looking for those type of women. It's a whole science. So the singing is the flattery that comes from these lyrics that they sing. The attempt is the things they say to get you hooked. Do you understand? That's the key right there. She will, she, what, it says, thou be taken with her attempts. Go back. Sirach 9 verse 4 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4. Read. Use not much the company of a woman that mm -hmm. is a singer. Come on. Lest thou be taken with her attempts. Lest thou be taken with her attempts. The flattery of the tongue. Read. Gaze not on a maid. Mm -hmm. That thou fall no, no. not. But... I, I'm going to come back to this. Read verse 6. Verse 6. Give not thy soul unto harlots. That thou 
that thou lose not thine inheritance. That you don't lose the kingdom. He said, don't give your soul unto harlots that thou lose not thine inheritance. The women in the world that you see, you be lusting after them, the women on the internet, so on and so forth. He says, what? Don't give your soul unto these, because they are prostitutes. You understand? That thou lose not thine inheritance, because they're going to cause you to lose your inheritance. Come on. Verse 7. Verse 7. Look not round about thee in the secrets, in the streets of the city. Neither wonder thou in the solitary places thereof. Looking for what? Looking for harlots? Looking for prostitutes? Looking for these women that are singers, women that will flatter you with a tongue. He says, don't go around about the city or in the streets. Neither wonder thou in the solitary places thereof, looking for these holes. Don't be doing that. You understand? Have some class. Have some dignity. You understand? The Lord has given us this book what, to have substance. That's why we must observe what is written so the spirit of the Lord can come upon us. Okay, I'll give an example. You see that part when it says, look not round about thee in the streets of the city, neither wander thou in the solitary places. Because what are you looking? What are you doing? What are, why would you be doing that? Because you are looking for women, harlots, and you want to give your soul to these harlots. And these harlots, they know that because they know the game. They know men. You understand? They know men. That's why when we open doors now, people are going to come into the physical building. You need to understand the type of people that are going to walk in. They're going to be people that used to be drug dealers that want to repent now. People that used to be pimps that want to repent now. Not only that, you're gonna, you, the, the, the Lord is going to bring harlots, people that used to work at teasers, people that used to work at all these brothels and all that, they are going to come in. Some will repent, some will not. But they will be in the camp. And guess what? They know men. They know men. And because they know men, they will what? They will look for that young man void of understanding, filled with youthful lusts, and they will catch you. Understand that. Understand what's coming. Sisters as well, understand there's going to be pimps. Pimps knows how to pick a simp sister. They know how to seek you out. That's a simple sister right there. Yeah, she got the Bible, but she don't apply. You see what I'm saying? That, that one right there, I want that one. And because you are a simp sister, you are desperate for a rod, guess what? You'll jump on there. And there's nothing we can do because if you give counsel, you don't follow the counsel, she's yours, sister. He's, he's all yours. You can't take it back, Okay. Now watch this, 1 Esdras 4, verse 22. This is the reason why men will be going up and down looking for these women. Watch this. Jump up to verse 5 first before we go to 1 Esdras. Now read verse 5, Sirach 9, verse 5. This is the reason why. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5. Go ahead. Gaze not on a maid, mm -hmm. that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. Because you are lusting after this woman, you're gonna fall by those things that are precious in her. Because how are you gonna see the how are you gonna fall for the things that are precious in her? Watch this. Um, go back to Proverbs 7, verse 10. This is how you're gonna do that. The reason why you're gonna fall for those things that are precious in her is because of this. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. Proverbs 7 verse 10. And behold, they met him a woman with an attire of an harlot. With the attire of an harlot. Go ahead. And behold, they met him a woman with the attire of an harlot mm -hmm. and subtle of heart. And subtle of heart. A woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. So this attire, the attire of a prostitute, what does it look like? They dress promiscuously. And the prostitute today, you don't meet them go teasers now. No, they are all in the streets. It's the women that leave the house with their leggings, where we see their camel toes, their boobs, you understand? Mini skirts, bum shorts, all of that. Leaving the house with the underwear, because that's what's going on now. And with the dress that is like a net, she leaves the house like that. That's a harlot. That's a hoe. Stay away from that hoe. 
until she repents. Now, because the reason why you want to fall for those things that are precious in her is because of her attire, the way she dresses. The way she dresses, you will fall for her because of the way she dresses. And she will paint her face and all of that like Jezebel did. Guess what? You will fall for that Jezebel and she will slay you. She will destroy you. Okay. Now give me first Esther 4, verse 22. I'm almost done. First Esther 4, verse 22. First Esther, chapter 4, verse 22. Mm -hmm. By this also, you must know that women have dominion over you. You see what he's saying? He says, by this also you must know that women have power over you. You see, the sisters, they have, they have a lot of power. But today, these, these unrighteous women, they misuse, it, they misuse the power they have. Because Zerubbabel is going to explain to you how powerful women are. Read that again, verse 22. First Ezra, the 4, verse 22. Mm -hmm. By this also, you must know that women have dominion over you. Come on. Do ye not labor and toil and give and bring all to the women? You see what he's saying? He says, do you not labor? Do you not work and toil? Meaning you struggle while you are laboring and give and bring all to the women. Imagine you work hard, nine to five. Some of those that want to do bid, go into business, you'll be working 15 hours to just to get that business up and running. And you lay, you give, you give and bring all to the woman. And now you have an ungrateful wife. You have an ungrateful wife that will suck the life out of you. Could you imagine that? That's a horrible life. Read. Yea, a man taketh a sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal, mm. to sail upon the sea and upon rivers. That's what the white man did. You understand? To rob, he robs the continent. To steal the resources upon the continent. To sail upon the sea. They are the, the, the transatlantic, they are the, the Indian Ocean, the Mediterranean. You understand? They be crossing seas to go and rob and steal. They bring to their women. That's why you see these Edomite women, these Arab women, these Chinese women, so on and so forth. They are decorated. They've got gold earrings, real gold. Real diamonds on their faces, on their necks, on their noses, nose jewels, and all of that, or from robbing us. And they bring all that to their women. Read. And looketh upon a lion, mm. and goeth in the darkness. Meaning what? He was willing to face a lion, you understand? A fierce animal like a lion, he is willing to face a lion in the face, and goeth in the darkness. Go ahead. And when he had stolen, spoiled, and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. You see what he's saying? When he had robbed, spoiled, he stolen, spoiled, and robbed. They steal, they spoil, and they rob. They bring all to the women. Because when you look at the, the way the white woman lives, the way the Chinese woman lives, the way the Arab woman lives and so forth, listen, they are well taken care of. You see them driving Bentleys. You see them driving Range Rovers, going to Santon. You see them, right? Yes, sir. Where do they got? Where did they get all these riches? They got all these riches from robbing us. And the riches they got from robbing us, they started companies and corporations and build skyscrapers. And they say, no, uh, Mohammed and such and such. You understand? Fanzail and this and this. You think, oh, Marie and Roberts. Listen. All of the stuff they got, they got those riches from robbing us. Because when you read this about the Spanish, the Spanish and the Portuguese Inquisition, when we were in Spain ruling, when the white men came over there in, in 1444, guess what they did? They robbed us of our resources when they kicked us out, they kicked us out of Spain and Portugal. They, they took our houses, they took our wealth, they took our gold, our diamonds, our precious things when they kicked us out of Spain, when we were the Moors ruling Spain and Portugal. They did that. You understand? During the Inquisition. Go ahead. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, a man loveth his wife better than father or mother. That's why a lot of the times you see couples be fighting. They fight like this. 
You are married, you want to help your parent, okay? She's married, she wants to help her parent. And they just be, and a lot of the times is the women that always have problems. When you as the husband, you want to help your father, you understand? Because the scripture says, help your father in this old age and help, don't forsake your mother. You might as well take care of them. Even if they are not keeping the commandments, take care of them because they raised you up. The point is, the wife, they are the ones, the women, they are the ones that always complain. But why are you always helping them? But when crisis goes in, goes on in her house, her mother or her father or a brother or sister, when now she wants you to help, there's never, there's no complaints. Complaints always happen when the man has to help his mother. Not for realizing that, hey, give me that in Tobit, because this is what, this is what causes a lot of fights. That brother that I was traveling with, Aubrey, the one that transport us, we was just talking about that. Hmm, watch this. I think it's in Tobit, right? Yes. Um, give me Tobit 10, verse 11. Watch this. Tobit chapter 10, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And he blessed them and sent them away, saying, The God of heaven give you a prosperous journey, my children. So now this is, remember, this is Sarah, okay? This is Sarah. Watch this. Now she's going to her in-laws now. Listen to what the, the advice is. Go ahead. Verse 12. And he said to his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. What did he say? This is the father now instructing the daughter. Read that part again. Tobit chapter 10 verse 12. Come on. And he said unto her, and he said to his daughter, mm -hmm. Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, mm -hmm. which are now thy, thy parents. Come on, I need you to put your power in your reading. I don't know what's going on. Read verse 12 again for me. There's something I want to pull out of this thing. Tobit chapter 10 verse 12. Read. And he said to his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, which are now thy parents. You see what he's saying? He's, 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 this is the father instructing his, 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 instructing his, uh, um, his daughter. It says, listen, honor your father and your mother-in-law, which are now thy parents. So the sisters don't understand. Imagine, they say, no, we want Lobola, right? Okay, Lobola gets paid. Lobola, the dowry gets paid and all of that. The transaction is done. Now she's your wife. The scripture says, your parents now are, your parents now is her parents. That's what the scripture that's what it says, honor your father and your mother-in-law, which are now your parents. But for some ungodly reason, when the sisters get married, they forget the lobola that was paid. They forget the transaction that has been made. Now, when you want to help your mother or your father, your parent, they complain. They forget, or but that's your parents too. Why are you having a problem with this? Because they are not in the spirit. They love the wedding, but they don't want the marriage. A lot of sisters, they want to get married, but in the context of having a wedding. That's it. They don't care about the marriage. They only care about the party, the wedding. That the marriage, they don't care about that thing. What we're reading here, this is the core of this one of the core of marriage. You understand? Read verse 12 again. Tobit chapter 10 verse 12. Come on. And he said to his daughter, mm -hmm. Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, which, which are now thy parents. Read. That I may hear good reports of thee. You see what he's saying? That I may, good hear, that I may hear good report of you. Meaning conduct yourself the right way. Don't embarrass me. Go ahead. And he kissed her. Edna also said to Edna also said to Tobias. Now watch the this. Lord of heaven. Listen, hold on. Listen, this is the mother now. This is the mother-in-law or to Tobias. Listen to what she says regarding her daughter. Watch this. Go ahead. The Lord of heaven restore thee, my dear brother. Mm. And grant that I may see thy children of my daughter Sarah before I die. Meaning I want to see my grandkids. Go ahead. That I may rejoice before the Lord. 
Mm -hmm. Behold, I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. You see what she's saying? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Don't run by that. It says, I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. So that's what happens when the, that transaction goes down. The parent of the, of the wife will also drop some words of wisdom. You understand? It says, I'm committing my daughter unto you of special trust. Watch the next part of that verse. Go ahead. Wherefore, do not entreat her evil. Don't mistreat, don't mistreat, don't mistreat my daughter. Don't abuse this woman. Don't abuse her. She's your wife. Don't abuse her verbally, spiritually, financially, and physically. Emotion, don't be abusing this woman. Don't bring up an evil name upon her. You understand? Because in this camp, you put your hands on your wife, we will kick you out the camp. And we'll call the police too. And you sisters, do not be sitting with a man that is physically abusing you. You better call the police. Call us after you've called the police. Don't call me before you call the police. No, no, no. Call the police first, then call us. Because if you don't make the call when the brother is abusing you, guess what? He eventually is going to kill you. Because you are teaching him that you can, you, it, it's okay. You're teaching him to get away with it. You understand what I'm saying? You sisters get that? I want to hear you sisters speak. Do you get that? Yes, sir. Okay, good. I don't want to hear none of those stories. The brother is, is, give me that in Proverbs. Let me just touch on that. You brothers that have a violent spirit, you are evil Negroes just hiding behind the fringes. Hmm, watch this. Let me read that thing. Okay. That, that man that is a forward mouth. Mm. He teaches with his he teacheth with his hands. Where's the scripture at? Brother Bezalel, I need my Bible back. Okay. Um, sir, it's in Proverbs 13. Um it says what he teaches. He, let's start at verse 12. Let's start at verse 12, Proverbs 6, verse 12. Let's start there. Proverbs 6, verse 12. Start there. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. Go ahead. A naughty person. A what? A naughty person. A naughty person. Come on. A wicked man. A wicked man. A naughty person and a wicked man. Go ahead. Walketh with a forward mouth. Walketh with a forward mouth, meaning what? He does not know how to check his mouth. Go ahead. Next verse. Come on. Verse 13. He winketh with his eyes. He winketh with his eyes. Read. He speaketh with his feet. He speaks with his feet, meaning he's be kicking, he'll be kicking you. You understand? He'll kick you. Read. He teacheth with his fingers. He teaches with his fingers, meaning he's going to be punching you upside the head. Yes. So you sisters, you better make, you can, listen. That's the reason why you need to prove. You understand? You need to prove a brother to see if, if this brother has an has a, has a anger spirit he's dealing with. He's got that fierce spirit in him. You understand? You need to watch that type of brother. He's hectic, okay? He says, he winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Understand that? So you sisters, don't be sitting with a man like that. You understand? You better pack your stuff and go until he gets his mind right. And that's going to take a long time for that before that happens. That's why it's important to avoid all of that. You must prove him first, okay? You must prove him first. Watch this. Um, go back to first Esdras. Where was we at? Toby. No, no, Tobit. Tobit. Go back to Tobit. Tobit 10. Yes, sir. Tobit chapter 10, verse 12. Go ahead. And he said to his daughter, 
honor thy father and thy mother in law, mm. which are now thy parents. Come on. That I may hear good reports of thee. Mm. And he kissed her. Edna also said to Tobias, The Lord of heaven restore thee, my dear brother, and Come grant on. that I may see thy children of my daughter Sarah before I die, mm -hmm. that I may rejoice before the Lord. Come Behold, on. I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. Wherefore, do not entreat her evil. You see what he's saying? I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. Wherefore, do not entreat her evil. So you sisters, you must not allow yourself to be entreated in an evil way outside of the scriptures. This man must deal with you according to knowledge. Give me that in First Peter. Okay. You keep the commandment, sister. Keep the laws of the Most High God. You understand? Build a good name in Israel. Guess what? These things come up. We will be behind you. We will help you. We will protect you. Okay. First Peter chapter 3. Read verse 7. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Go ahead. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. You see what the Lord is saying? Dwell with them according to knowledge. How? Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians now. Okay. Ephesians 5 verse 28. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 28. Go ahead. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Mm -hmm. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. You see what he's saying? So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. So if you deal with your wife according to knowledge, this is what you're going to apply. You're going to love your wife as you love your own body because guess what? You are not going to afflict. You will not run yours. You, you're not going to run headlong into a wall to hurt yourself. The same way you will not do that, you're not going to do that to your wife. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 29. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. Mm. Come on. But nourish it and cherish it. Read. Even as the Lord, the church. You see what he's saying? For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. Because you're not going to hate yourself so much that you'll be punching yourself in the face. You don't do that to yourself. So you're not going to do that to your wife. Because if you do, you've got the devil on you. And, and you got to go. There's no negotiation. There's no meat. There's no, mm -mm. You got to get the hell out. Right? For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Uh, read verse 29 again. I'm sorry. Read verse 29 again. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 29. Come on. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished it and cherished it, even as the Lord, the church. Because the Lord, he, he, what? He, nourish, he nourished us and he cherished us. You understand? When he died on the cross for us. So likewise, we must do the same for our wives. We must be willing to sacrifice ourselves for our wives. Meaning what? When we go out there to war, we are doing this to pro for the sake of the nation. Christ did that for us. We must do that for our nation. The wives, the children, and all of that. That's what this is going into. You understand? Because when danger comes, who goes out first? You. Because you're the protector. You're the provider. You're the protector. You understand? You're the teacher. That's your job. Okay? Let's go back to 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3, verse 7 again. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Read verse 7 again. You were in the matrix there for a second. Read verse 7 again. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, 
as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So that's why he says, you must, we must deal with our wives according to knowledge, because the knowledge is the laws of God. The laws of God teaches you in Ephesians 5, 28, you understand how you must deal with your wife, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. So it doesn't mean you must disrespect your wife. So you being the Lord does not mean disrespect your wife. You don't mean that. You understand? Because she's part of you. So if you disrespecting your wife also, guess what? You disrespecting yourself because you, you two are supposed to be one flesh. So being Lord over your wife does not mean you must ill treat her. You must speak to her like a child. You must, you, know, you must belittle her. No, 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 no. You must correction, because some sisters will, will confuse correction with, with um, they don't know, they don't know when, when, when you raise your voice, they don't like that. No, if you do some dumb stuff, yes, I'm going to do that. Why? Because you're doing some evil stuff. You're doing some dumb stuff. Sister, get your mind right. The hell is this? But guess what? Verbal abuse, emotional abuse, financial abuse, and physical abuse, they are not acceptable. Well, they, they are non-negotiable. Guess what? You need to get your mind right. That's why a lot of the times, mm, I'm going off now, I'm going on a different tangent. That's why a lot of the times, here's the reason why these type of things happen. Okay? Give me that in First Timothy. Okay? Um... No, no, give me second, second, second Timothy 3. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Watch this. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Meaning dangerous times, evil times will come. We are in the last days right now. Go ahead. For men shall be lovers. Of their own selves. Stop right there. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. They're not going to care about you. They're not going to care about their nation. They're not going to care about nobody else but themselves. That's what the Lord is telling you. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Hmm. Some heavy stuff right there. Sister, you better make sure that you are not proving a brother that spends 30 minutes in front of the mirror. You have problems. You have some serious problems. Okay, so you brothers with ponytails and all of that, you better watch that. Read that thing again. Second Timothy Come on. chapter 3, verse 2. Go ahead. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. You understand? Lovers of their own selves. They're only going to care about them and them only. They're not going to care about you. They're not going to care about their nation that they're supposed to build. They're not going to do that. They're not going to teach you. They're not going to guide you. They're going to build you up and raise you up and make sure that you're going to be able to, uh, to teach the children the right things. You understand? So these are the things that are going to happen in these last days. Go ahead. Covetous. You know what? Jump down, jump down to verse 3. Read verse 3. Second Timothy chapter three verse three. Without natural affection. So these men that will be lovers of their own selves, they are not going to have natural affection. They will have none. Without natural affection. Natural affection is what we read in Ephesians five, First Peter three. You understand? Natural affection. They're not going to have natural. They're going to have unnatural affection. Because of what? They're going to be lovers of their own selves instead of loving you according to knowledge. Go ahead. Truce breakers. Come on. Truce breakers. Meaning you have an agreement, they just break it. They don't follow through with it. We agree we're going to do X, Y, and Z. They don't do it. You understand? That's what's going on now. Truce breakers. Read. Right? Meaning disloyalty. False right? accusers. False, they lie. They're going to lie to you. They're going to spit a good game because you are a simp. You don't study as a sister. You don't apply. You don't seek counsel. You don't follow the counsel you receive. 
guess what? These men, they are the, they are the ones that are going to what? They are the ones that you're going to get yourself involved with. Right. Incontinent. Let's get the definition of that word right there. We don't use that word. Let me see. Incontinent. Let's see what that means. Incontinent. Lack of self-restraint. Lack of self-restraint. That's the man that you're gonna get with because you are you are horny, you are burning. You're gonna get you're gonna get with incontinent men that have no natural affection. False accusers incontinent. They have no self-restraint. They have no discipline. Go ahead. Fierce. Fierce. Meaning what? They cannot speak kindly to you. Go ahead. Despises of those that are good. They hate those that keep God's laws. Come on. Traitors. Traitors, meaning what? They will, they will what? They, they are disloyal. Read. Heady. Heady, proud. Come on. High-minded. High-minded, meaning what? Their thought process is above this book. Read. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They guess what? They can they can dig you down. Yeah, and they can lay the pipe down, but they don't know nothing about this Bible. They only care about what? They only care about themselves. Pleasures, lovers of pleasures. And you sisters that are burning and all of that, you better make sure because if you get with this brother and he knows how to deal with you in the bedroom, guess what? Over time, that is not going to sustain you over time. It will, not, it will not sustain you over time. You understand? So you better make sure that you run the, sun, the standard of choosing men that you used to have in the world that must all change when you come into this truth. Your standard must be different. Your standard must be based on God's commandments. You must not be looking at his shoes, how tall he is, how well he can speak. And no, mm -mm. You, you, you must measure him according to what this Bible says. Prove him. The same way he's proving you, you must prove him according to this book. You understand? Read. Verse five. Having Come a on. form of godliness. Read. But denying, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. He says they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Meaning they don't apply. Their form of godliness, their fringes, a bottle of blue. They've got a beard. They come to the, they observe the Sabbath. They go to camp and all of that. A form of godliness, but they deny the power. They don't apply what is written in this book. Yeah, you can put on fringes. It's easy to do that. The, state, the stuff that brothers don't want to deal with is those things that you cannot touch. Those are the things that you really want to deal with. You understand? How they handle anger. How do they deal with their temper? How do they deal with, with, with conflict? How do they resolve conflict? Do they resolve conflicts by punching you in the face? You need to know those things. You understand? Read. Verse 6. For of the sort are they which creep into houses Come on. and lead. What's going Hello? on here? So I think there's a delay, uh, Read that verse again. Come on. Read that, read that verse again. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and mm. leave and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away captive, led away with diverse lusts. You see what they're gonna do? They these are the ones that creep into houses and they lead captive silly women laden with sins. Because guess what? You sisters, what you do, watch this. Give me Sarak. Give me Ecclesiasticus. Some sisters, they have no breaks. Hmm. Watch this thing. Sarak chapter 11, verse 29. Watch this thing right here. Ecclesiasticus chapter 11, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Bring not every man into thine house. For the deceitful man hath many trains. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't bring every man into thine house. 
For the deceitful men have many trains, meaning what? Evil thoughts, schemes, and plans. You understand? These are the ones that's, that what? That creep into houses and they lead captive silly women, meaning dumb women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lust. They want to sex you, they leave you with a baby, they are gone. That's my, that's your baby. Mm -mm. No, that's not my baby. They can deny it. And what are you going to do? That's why we get on you, sisters. Make sure that you prove a brother. You understand? Listen to counsel. Never, because you're going to meet those brothers says, yeah, but don't talk to leadership. You don't have to say, you don't have to tell leadership everything. Just tell them the things they need to hear. You simple as hell. Because get what that, that Negro is doing. He's waking you. He's isolating you. You understand? The day now that when he gets you, problems arise in your marriage, guess what? Now you have to stand for the decisions you have made. Brothers as well. This will happen to the brothers too. You understand? Go back to 2 Timothy 3 now, verse 7. 2 Timothy but, chapter but 3, verse 7. Actually, you know what? You see that part when it says, hold on, wait, wait, wait. When it says, bring not every man into thine house, meaning what? You just want to receive every man into your house. That also goes into your spiritual house as well. Bring not every man into that's why today you see sisters with multiple babies, different men, because they be bringing multiple men into their house. Today, the uncle comes. Next month, there's a new uncle. Another month, there's a new uncle because they just keep bringing all these men into their houses. They're walking in and out because the sister's burning. You understand? She don't care about the kids. She don't care about the impact that this behavior will, will have on the kids in the long run. She don't care about that. You understand? 2 Timothy 3, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now that's heavy right there. Read. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. Now read that verse again. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. You see that these are men of corrupt minds. They are reprobate. They are void of judgment concerning the faith in Christ. They don't care about the, they don't care about the gospel. They only care about the, the, the pleasures because they are lovers of pleasures. They're not going to love you. Watch this. Psalm 36 verse 21. Ecclesiastes 36, verse 21. A woman will receive every man, mm -hmm. yet is one daughter better than another. Meaning that daughter that does not receive every man. That's why do not bring every man into thine house. So it says a woman will receive every man. You receiving every man, they will sex you, they will leave you. They will what? You will turn into a parachute. It will take years for the parachute to shrink back. So you better be very mindful in this truth. You understand? Very mindful. Okay, I'm going to end the class right there. All praise to the Most High. Okay, the Spirit just jumped me on this thing. Watch this. Give me that in, uh, let's break bread. All praise to the Lord. First Corinthians 11. In the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do he, as oft as he drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. And drink this cup of the Lord. Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread. And drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. Shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. 
and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.